买那个泳池 DVD 哈、哦。还有老罐，还没塞。老罐的老罐，那个一餐十块五块一斤。Has a very very nice clubhouse as well. Uh, we might have a chance just to look in there this afternoon, but uh, we don't have time, unfortunately, to see everything. Miles, I think something like that uh, to Prince George, uh, and then uh, left will take you on to Prince Rupert. <laughs> Straight ahead, that's one way into the town of Terrace, but it's a one-way bridge. It's kind of narrow, so it's not good for a bus. So we take the other, the other bridge into town, which is a relatively new uh, two-lane bridge. In about uh, two to three weeks, the river will be high as high as where those logs are uh, on that gravel bar. So the snow is just beginning to melt, the river is just beginning to come up. But in another couple of weeks, it'll be in the annual spring flood when the snow melts. It's quite a pretty area. Back, so it's called Sleeping Beauty Mountain. Population of about 21,000. Uh, this area the whole area of Prince Rupert, Paris, Kinnaman has had a very, very bad recession that's lasted five years. Uh, there was a very large pulp mill in Prince Rupert uh, which went into bankruptcy and the sawmill, they owned the sawmill in Terrace which closed. Uh, several thousand jobs were lost so we've had about a 20% population decline and it's only just now, about uh, six months ago, the mill was bought by some local people and it's just reopened. That's on the left there. And it's only now that the economy is coming back. So people are quite positive. The main uh, impetus is that construction is going to start this year on a container port, a massive container port in Prince Rupert. That's very good. And uh, the city councils up here now are becoming more and more interested in developing tourism. And uh, I think in the next few days, you'll see that there really is some very, very good tourism potential in the area and uh, very anxious to hear what your comments are at the end of the tour. We're basically coming in the back way into town. Downtown is just on the left but we'll uh, take a little sightseeing tour after lunch and uh, have a look around. Land is very cheap in Terrace, that's why uh, it's much cheaper to build out than it is to build up. Prince Rupert land is very expensive, so you see more high-rise buildings, but here it's, it's much cheaper to build a large, take up more land and stick to one story than it is to use less land and build three or four stories. And uh, the city bought it. The city are hoping to redevelop it. Uh, ideally into a sort of a convention center facility. It's a very nice piece of land. On the right is the George Little House. George Little was the founder of Terrace, and that's uh, his house. That's the very first house that was built in Terrace. It wasn't on that site. It's been moved there now. So here we are. This is the best Western Terrace in. This will be... Well, if you buy my house, I'll get you a really good deal on the travel agency. <laughs> Something for free, right? <laughs> that one get away free. So, and on the right is the other uh, 
hotel that we have in town, uh, which is the Coast Hotel, the, uh, the coast uh, in of the west. And then on the left are the main uh, shopping complexes. There's a brand new Shoppers Drug Mart uh, opened up in town. And then uh, Safeway. Where's the liquor store? Uh, <laughs> I heard that was in your hotel room tonight. <laughs> There's a liquor store on the right. We have two or three private liquor stores as well. <laughs> this is another nice uh, Bear, Country. Uh, Bear Country Inn, which is more of a, a motor hotel. What kind of hotel? Motor hotel. In other words, it's not inside. Uh, oh, I see. But it's, uh, oh, McDonald's. And then on the left is our uh, major shopping mall. Oh, save our food. You know, sell your house. Buy, buy a hotel here. <laughs> no, property is very cheap here, but it's beginning to climb again. The economy is beginning to turn. But what we call the beautification society. So these concrete... Uh, circular things you see there on the May long weekend. The community plants flowers in them, so there's lots of flowers around town. And you see we have uh, lots of nice little gardens, but we don't plant uh, annuals here until May long weekend. We can still get a frost uh, this time of year. And you can see the trees, some of the trees are only just beginning to come out. So we're about uh, three weeks behind Vancouver. And uh, we're very late this year. We had a very, very cold spring. March was very warm, but April was, was really cold. Now we're just going to drive along. This is Highway 16 that goes to Prince Rupert. We're just going to drive along here a little way. And uh, then we turn up to the college. If you look on the left, it's a very nice little, what we call a lineal park, which is a very nice pathway and uh, trees and what have you. It was uh, put in the year 2000, so the trees are just beginning to uh, to get settled and uh, it would be very nice in another few years when the trees are more mature. Cypress. Normally how much to get a house here? Sorry? How much to get a house here? Three bedroom house, a pretty good one would start at about 150,000. If you wanted to get a house with a view like those ones on the next terrace, you pay quite a bit more to have a view. Oh, it's Boston Pizza on the right here. I have 550,000, I sell you 250. Yeah. <laughs> it depends what you want. Kinemat is less and Prince Rupert is less still. So there's more, there's mo more motels going down here and a couple of pubs and what have you, but essentially this is the end of uh, the major part of Terrace with the Canadian Tire. They've just gone through a major expansion. So it's not their grand opening of the store, but it's the grand opening after their expansion. years ago was rated by um, National Geographic as one of the top 10 most beautiful drives in the world. So you'll see that when we drive back from uh, Prince Rupert to Terrace on Saturday afternoon. the subdivision. Uh, there are houses that are much closer to town. For example, it'll be a bit of a long walk to walk into town from here, but uh, 
Uh, it's it's pretty nice uh, subdivision. I would say these houses here would go for a hundred and hundred and seventy thousand, hundred and eighty thousand maybe. College. You can do carpentry there, welding, what have you, but also academic programs. You can do uh, first year university and now second year, some courses. And they've just started a nursing program. So they have dormitories there as well as classrooms. And uh, Adam just has uh, a little bit of business here, so we're going to call in here and stop for just a few minutes. of the uh, green buildings over there uh, in front of us and to the right and then the classrooms are here on the right and on the left so the green uh, the admin building is, is back there a little bit anywhere but anywhere you can put the bus is fine if you turn in here that would be great Drain it. 
that is never done at any other school in uh, fourth class. It's never done at any other school, period. But um, it, at fourth class, usually a fourth class person is kind of like, they hire them and they're kind of like janitors. Uh -huh. And so basically what's happened with all my fourth class up in Fort St. John, Fort McMurray, um, mostly in Alberta right now, and um, is that they get hired mm -hmm. and then they are asked if um, uh, they get hired into like a, a labor pool mm -hmm. and then once they find out as soon as something goes wrong they say oh well maybe it's this maybe it's that and they go you know like my third class don't know that oh. so now the companies are coming to me and saying send me more power engineers I see. so to work, what, what can you do some of my guys are actually running small plants in Alberta. Small uh, generating plants um, like in the oil fields, just the small ones. And um, like the gas plants. Gas plants. Yeah. Like generating electricity. Yeah. And yeah. Oh. yeah. Okay. And also the, uh, for the students, there is no dorm in this, in this school, in this campus. Uh, but uh, Nancy has a uh, the apartment building for the students to stay. And with a two bedroom apartment, it's about 450, 450. <coughs> that's for furnished. Furnished. Two, furnished. furnished. For, two furnished. bedroom, furnished. That's like your living room furniture, kitchen table and chairs. Yeah. Um, for 450. 450, that's for two, light For heat. two people, or yeah. maybe they can four students share. One sure, room. yeah. Yeah, maybe you can. Yes, no. that right on the and agencies enforcing jams. They are trying. They are they are working with us to yeah. the students to do the students yeah. placement for their job placements. Student placements. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. So that is to say for sure, one hundred percent. Yeah. When they finish the program, they can get a job. Okay. Uh, Nancy, what's the shortage of the power engineering in BC and? BC uh, I tell is them about. About, BC is about uh, they say about thirty five hundred. Alberta is ten thousand. Ten thousand. Ten thousand. That's why they said. That's why they're hiring. My students got hired back there. They have to get their third class. Mm -hmm. They're given a certain amount of so time, and they have to get it. Third class, right? So no, no, no. no. Third, third class, class is higher, higher. Than, than, than fourth. Yes. Okay. But when you finish the fourth, you can get a job. Okay. But you do. Do you have a third class here? Longer. Yes, yes I do. I I do how, a fourth. How long? How? Twelve months. Another twelve months. Yeah. So. That's why I was saying, I think we could work, um, if we wanted the third class, mm -hmm. we could, in two years, we could do ESL, the fourth class, and the, the, third, th class. And the third class. Yes, we're going to figure out the cost. Yeah. So, so third uh, class is for immigrants, third class for better life. Even with the okay. fourth, even, even with the first class, they can still get a job. So the key point for the students who want to work and immigrate here is the need to get a job. Mm -hmm, yes. So e that is to say, with the minimum with mm -hmm. requirements, even if they get a class four, they can still get a job, right? Mm -hmm. So according well, to the immigration. Well, my students are getting jobs. Yes. Mm -hmm. So um, all my students this last year, um, I only have one student in the last three years. So mm -hmm. there's, um, there's 18, 15, and um, 18 and 15. So um, all but one have jobs, um, in, in, um, mostly in Alberta. Mm -hmm. Some of them have jobs at Elkan and Uricam, mm -hmm. um, but they don't, um, they're not using their tickets there. Mm -hmm. But the reason they got the job was because they had the ticket. I see. So it proved to the company mm -hmm. that they can learn and they are willing to learn. So then they got hired, where before they had tried for six, seven years to get in. Oh, I see. So it's a... But what I said was, we, I think you and I have to sit down and yes. that's what I have right now. And I think if we're talking full classes, mm -hmm. um, then we have to sit down and figure out exactly yes. how we can yes. work everything out with the ESL language on top of it. <laughs> and those are, yeah. no, you want to go, okay, yeah. 
the golf courses up here don't get terribly busy. Yeah, not much real feel like playing here. Hmm? Not much feel playing here. Well, the thing in Kitty Mad Ranger. Uh, sure. 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 Uh, Oh, 
Oh, so, uh, uh -huh. Somebody else wants to talk, the stick has to be passed on to that person before they can talk. Yeah, they're very older, yes. So it's uh, only one person talks at a time, the person with the talking stick. Oh, this makes get right. Yeah. Good for a tour guy, you know. <laughs> when you're talking, you talk, hold something, nobody, talk, nobody else talks. <laughs> well, you, you forgot the talking stick, you have to listen. Uh, there's the spout. Okay. The water spout. Okay. And uh, is this wedding ring, Ray? That's my wedding ring. Okay. So uh, your wife got the same one. Same one. Really? Yeah. Okay. So, like, and there's uh, a beautiful gold bracelet. Okay. Gold. That's just a gold. Gold. Yeah. Like my wedding ring. My wedding ring is a gold uh, carved uh, native carved yeah. ring. How much for? That sells, mm. you know, sells. Like couple it. thousand. Mm -hmm. I have to find oh, a couple thousand. Oh. It, so half what it would cost in Vancouver sell? anyway. The abalone, that, that's local. <laughs> Boy, buy for girl. Uh, in a little while, 
it's a, there's a spring and somebody rigged up a pipe into a tree. Do you want to just slow down a little bit, Marie, if you can, if there's nothing behind, is there something behind you? Okay, well don't worry then. See if I can spot this special tree. The pipe coming out of the tree. Oh. Yeah, we're not coming out. Um, it's rather rude, but the people around here call it the pissing tree because it looks like the trees, the trees going to the toilet. It's a, there's a spring near there and somebody's rigged up a pipe into the tree and the tree's alive and local people come there to get spring water it's very very fresh very good tasting water and very healthy water Where, it's called the, yeah do you see the tree oh you yeah. missed it it's yeah, called the peeing water. the peeing tree yeah <laughs> yeah
designation. So you are now Highway 113. <laughs> 113 years it took us to wake up and understand what you were telling us. different. Yours different from 
Mustafa, as is our visitor from China, from me, in, in language and culture. So we can say that British Columbia has a genetic inheritance of diversity. Diversity has always been what you want. Before even the first Europeans came here, this coast had made a language of languages so you could talk to each other. And when the first Europeans came, the, the fur traders came, they said, we can't talk to anybody. So they added Iroquois, French, English, Chinese, Hawaiian, and Japanese. And they made a language called Chinook. And that language was the trading language. And it was the language of British Columbia. And that says to us that we have always been very different from each other. So now, when all the world's people are here, people from every root and branch of human society are part of this British Columbia. We need to remember how diverse we are because that diversity makes us strong as a people. And you who are young, I hope, will maintain that culture for all your days and be part of the language, be part of the art. I know that young people have done this art and have done those beautiful poles outside. When I came here many years ago, there were no poles in King Kulik. Those poles are new. And those poles are part of a whole new generation of history and culture and diversity. So as I come to you today, I come to you in thanks and in respect for all the long memories I have of our many times we have worked together in many situations. I also bring you my great admiration. Of all the peoples of this coast, you have been able to move toward your goal. And all the rest will, in the time, I know, achieve the same thing. But you have shown great strength in leadership. And I think of all my old friends in the past, probably some of your graduates, who are here today with great fondness. So thank you all with my very best wishes on behalf of all British Columbians in the and in the name of the Crown of British Columbia, Queen Elizabeth, the Queen of Canada, I recognize and remember the fiduciary duty of the Crown to the First Nations under the provisions of the Royal Proclamation of 1763. And today I represent that to you, and I am proud to do that in the knowledge that you taught me a very long time ago some of the really important things about me. I will see you all at Gibbon Sydney for the opening of the game. Hi. 
Father and Lord, for the name of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. Amen. And it's our wish that this not be your last visit to this community. Be good. We've been active citizens.听到了两天了我们请一个杨校长先给我们发表一下感言吧我就简单一句话一会儿结束以后把你们男生都留下我把女生都带走你们同不同意啊我同意是老大同意我老二你们都留下啊你们都留下同意什么同意他把女生都带